The fact that you are a Christian does not mean anxiety will not come at times. It is normal for every human being to feel this way. However, we as Christians know the one who can help us out of anxiety. The Bible says in Philippians chapter 4, verse 6 through 7, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and minds through Christ Jesus. 1 Peter chapter 5, verse 7 Casting all your cares, all your anxieties, all your worries, and all your concerns, once and for all, on Him. For He cares about you with deepest affection and watches over you carefully. What are you stressing about today? What are you anxious about? Give it to God. Give it to God. He is the God that cares. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. We all have been through a lot, some more so than others, but that is the nature of life. One way or another, as you go through the different seasons, life will take its toll on you. Life can really beat you down. It can really beat a person down. And as I am preaching right now, for some of us it seems as if there is no hope at all at some point, and we don't even know what to do. The truth about life is that it is not fair. It is not fair. Some people are just born with the right last name. Some people are just born in the right part of the world, while others aren't. Some people get breakthroughs, and other people don't. That is the nature of this life. This fallen world we live in is not fair. We have many things to worry about. We have things that are bothering us, and we are praying that God should help us with them. If you are praying that God should help you, then why don't you just trust God? God said he will fight for you, and you will hold your peace. God won't fail you or leave you. Men and women can leave you. Even your mother and father can leave you. But you have a God who cares about you. Trust in the Lord. You are asking, how do I overcome the challenges I, that I am facing? How do I breathe in the storms that are smashing against my life? How do I cope with the flood of thoughts we have? How do I do away with worrying? How do I handle life when it comes at me with full force? When the storm is blowing at its highest level, when the fire is burning at its highest level, how do I handle them? God has just one answer for you, and he is saying you should trust him. Are you trusting God? There is one thing I will say to you now. I have not seen anyone who has a problem that is bigger than God. Yes. Your problems may be big, the storms may be fierce, but I have not seen any bigger than God. There is no way you will bring your problems to God, and it will be too heavy for Him. There is no question that God doesn't have the perfect answer for. God is bigger than your problems. God is bigger than your challenges. Amid that storm, amid that flood, God will do a new thing. Just trust in God. God has everything you need to overcome the storm. God is telling you today 
that he will make a way for you. Your problems, the pains, all the things you are going through that you can't even share with anyone, God is telling you today that he will make a way. Isaiah chapter 43 verse 19, King James Version. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. Are you trusting God? What happens when you trust in God? There is no quick answer to this. The truth is, a lot of things happen when you trust in God. But some of the things that happen is found in Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God. In Him I will trust. Therefore, what is the secret place? And why is it called a secret place? The true answer is that the secret place is God. Over and above all, we need to know the various conditions needed to dwell in the secret place of God, because there's no valuable or viable thing out there that doesn't have requirements. The first condition is that we must learn to trust in God. Psalm 91 verse 2, my God, in him I will trust. If we desire to see God do some amazing things in our life, then we must learn to put our trust in him. We should not repose confidence in ourselves or our talents, but we should rather trust in him that created all things. John chapter 15, verse four through five. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. My friend, my point today is that everything physical that you know, everything that you see, everything that you are conscious of and that you know was created by an invisible spirit being, God Almighty. He spoke it all into existence. My friend, we need God. Whether you like it or not, this world, our society needs God. When we wake up in the morning, we need God. When we go to sleep at night, we need God. The Lord Jesus Christ said, without me, you can do nothing. You are not the captain of your life. You are not in control. You need God more than you will ever know. Nothing outside of God can exist. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Without God, you cannot, you cannot do anything. Nothing can live without God. You can't breathe without God. Your heart cannot beat without God. The whole universe cannot exist without God. We need the almighty God that is from everlasting to everlasting. The remarkable thing about this is when you understand this, when you understand that you cannot do anything without God, you don't turn to the pastor. You don't turn to religion. You don't turn to a doctor. You don't turn to a psychologist. You turn to Jesus. He is the answer to your question. He is the solution to your problems. He is the shelter in the storm. He is the friend that sticks closer than a brother. He is the breath to your lungs, Jesus, the King of Kings, Jesus, the only begotten Son of our Lord, Jesus, the only way to heaven, Jesus, the Alpha and Omega, 
Jesus, the soon coming King, Jesus. If you are in trouble, cry out to him. If you need salvation, tell him what you want. The benefits of trusting God is that God will be our refuge and fortress. Psalm 91 verse two. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him I will trust. Please carefully notice that God does not say he will provide refuge, but he is the refuge. It is so important for us to know and grasp this. A refuge is a place to rest and recover, but a fortress is a place of protection. What we see here is that God is both. When you trust in God, he will be our backbone and supporter. Psalm 91 verse 2 As previously said, our trust cannot be in ourselves, not in our works or our talents and capabilities. It must be in somebody greater than us. Remember the story of David and Goliath. The Philistines trusted their giant, but David rested under the shadow of the Almighty. The two nations were curious to know the supporter of one another because somebody behind the scene is more important than things in the scene. Our trust is in God, who made heaven and earth. When you trust in God, he will be our deliverer. Psalm 91 verse 3 Surely he shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. If you live the Christian life long enough, then you will know that the world is against you because they are against God. John chapter 15, verse 18 through 19. If the world hates you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore, the world hateth you. But for those who dwell in a close relationship with God Almighty, have nothing to fear because God will deliver them. When you trust in God, he will cover us. Psalm 91 verse 4 He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. In other words, just like a mother bird covers her chicks with her wings, so God tenderly and carefully covers us so that evildoers can't touch us. Therefore, we are too defended to become a victim. Romans chapter 8 verse 35 Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or sword? 